Hello and welcome to another episode of Graham Hughes' podcast. And today I am joined by Twitter RT, Phil in Gibraltar. Hi, Phil. Hi, YouTube or whichever various video streaming platform this goes out on. Today, our podcast is entitled The People, that's me, versus Jeremy Corbyn. Which is apparently me. Yes. Well, you're not Jeremy, but you're going to be trying to defend, to defend him. So I'm going to be the prosecutor. And, I, and you're going to try and be the defender. And then at the end of it, we will let people make up their own minds in the, Twitter co- in the YouTube comments to say who they think actually held the best argument. So here's, here's my start, starter for 10. Jeremy Corbyn set back the cause of socialism in this country by a generation. And it is something I will never forgive him for. Okay, so my retort to that would be that Jeremy Corbyn, in fact, brought socialism into the argument for the first time, arguably, since the 70s and the 80s. People sort of... When when did he do that? When he released the manifesto that was wildly popular, where he brought back nationalisation of the rails into common talk, brought back... Was that that the manifesto that led Labour to have the worst electoral defeat in its history? Was that the wildly popular manifesto? Was that the it was a wildly one? popular manifesto in that when it was blind tested, people looked yeah. at it. It was only when they found out they were Jeremy oh. policies that okay. they liked them. Where was the bit about universal basic income and, and, and electoral reform and us staying in the EU with some of the most progressive and socialist nations on the planet? Okay, so I'll take that as the three separate points. UBI was not in the manifesto, unfortunately. We did push yeah. at the NEC and at the conference. We did want it in there. There were a lot of close allies of Mr. Corbyn. McDonald, for example, speaks very afflu- affluently. That's not the right word. So you do with that because the problem thing will come up. He speaks very articulately about why UBI is very good. It was widely condemned in the media. Uh, it, did, it was not playing well, very well at all. And ultimately, the decision was made to put it out. Interesting that during this COVID crisis, the most radically right-wing Western government, the United States, engaged in UBI. They sent yes. stimulus checks. But so, the, the more fascinating thing is the first president of the United States to come up and say UBI might be a good idea was none other than Richard Milhouse Nixon, of all people. But apparently Nixon is more left-wing than Jeremy Corbyn. Who? Well, no, 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 no. Cause, cause, it cause, wasn't that left wing and <clears throat> destroyed the left wing for the rest of us who wanted a more progressive society that wasn't dominated by the worst part of the Conservative Party. Well, let's, let's, let's take your point there on Richard Milhouse Nixon. We should always use his middle name. It's very important to me that we do so whenever we talk about him. But you're criticising Corbyn for not putting it into a manifesto or, in, or an yes. attempt at policy. But Nixon yes. never did that either. He only ever spoke about it. Oh, well, I know, I know, I know. I'm just saying that if I was in charge of Labour, that would be in there. And I'm a centralist. I'm one of those bastard centralist people who, who want the thing that the most people want. But I'm, I'm intrigued at what was in the manifesto that was so hugely revolutionary. Was it taking away the tuition fees that Labour had introduced? Okay, that was that wasn't necessarily costed for the universities. It was costed for the government, but not necessarily for the universities themselves. But in the previous manifesto in 2017, they didn't want to abolish tuition fees. They were just going to reduce them by about a third. That doesn't seem very revolutionary to me. That just seems like boring business as usual, politics as usual. It's, it was a it was a fairly cheap cop out in the first one. And then they pushed forward on it because at the grassroots level, it was an extremely popular policy. It was something that we wanted to push you know, through the party. It got pushed at conference. It got pushed through and it ended up in there, which for, for me speaks to what, in terms of, you know, for socialism, Jeremy did for the Labour Party, which was to get the voices of the grassroots heard and into policy. You get all the people started on the, that on... evolution of policy right there. The people involved in that, Jeremy Corbyn, Seamus Milne, Jenny Formby, Andrew Fisher, Andrew Murray, uh, John Landsman, all privately educated. 
Are people who are privately educated automatically bad? Um, well, yeah. I would say no before, but in the last year, it's become abundantly clear that all that lot, Cummings, Johnson, two thirds of the cabinet that we have at the moment, uh, Ed Davey from the uh, Lib Dems, Leila Moran, anyone who's high up in politics at the moment, with the exception of Keir Starmer, who was accused of going to a private school when he didn't actually go to a private I school. Did see that. that was quite good. Um, has basically uh, somehow risen to the top despite being a bit shit at their job. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you to task on this because during so, so COVID... Can, can, I, can I just speak to the original yeah. point to sort of uh, posit against that everybody went to private school is automatically a dick? I think that, <laughs> I think that they are automatically privileged. And I yes. think it's, 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 and very to use about, it. it's very much about the recognition of that privilege. You know, does somebody recognise the fact that they got a step up in life as a result of that? Well, uh, of, the, of the people uh, you name there, certain people do acknowledge that step up. Yes. People just play it off as, well, you know, it was my right. Uh, but it's just ludicrously unfair that the situation is, if you are mediocre, if you are a mediocre person with a mediocre mind and you didn't go to private school, then there's no chance of you getting anywhere. But if you went to private school, those doors are going to be open to you, even if you're really mediocre, which is, which is, uh, which is an awful way of doing it. The other thing that's that a systemic wasn't in, societal but, issue, though. It's not just to any either side of the political spectrum. That's okay. In general. Well, let's, let's go back to that accusation. Which is, there, just so, that just the quickly, just quickly then. But Labour manifesto was abolishing. Forgot. The Labour push for the abolishing of the charitable tax status of private schools, which would yeah. bring parity up. They would be able to put that money into the education system. You would argue that that would push the quality of education up, at least in the sense that more money... They, they need to be closed down. That's it. They need to be closed down. Or, or, or reformed so that they only take children with special needs who need that extra schooling, and it's paid for by the state. I think, I think people should have the option to go to private school. However, I don't think that that should be in any way subsidised by any other person of the tax, any, in fact, any person full stop beyond the parents. Yeah, but it's not fair. It's not exactly. fair on the rest of us. Why, why, why is my child disadvantaged? Because some rich kid gets to go to a school that opens all the doors for them, that gives them the access. Because we know it's not what you know, it's who you know. And with someone as... as crushingly mediocre as Jeremy Corbyn was, uncharismatic, just, it, it was like granddad being shuffled out on stage and everyone went, yeah, this is amazing. And no one really knew why. And no one could articulate why it was amazing. He snarled a bit. He was a socialist apparently, but I don't think he was particularly any further left than Tony Blair. Oh, he was definitely further to the left than Tony Blair. I'd even argue he was further to the left than Ed Miliband, who's probably, you know, bar 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 okay. the most left wing of the... Okay, so time. UBI was mentioned at the, at the conference, I guess, along with the whole waving of Palestinian flags. I mean, nothing says we care about the, the disenfranchised, disenfranchised and poor of this nation, like people at a conference waving the flags of another nation. Um, but that, that's, that's another matter. We'll come back to that. Uh, yeah, you're saying at the conference, that, UBI yeah. was discussed, but it wasn't put into the... It was, uh, it was, you know, it was a democratic process. It wasn't, it wasn't voted for by the majority. It wasn't accepted. It didn't go in. Hang on. Wasn't there a, a vote whether to push for a second referendum and push for Remain? And, and the, there was a, a hand, hands go up and then someone whispered, Jenny says that it didn't go through. And, it, and they said, OK, can we do, vote again? You went, no. It doesn't seem very democratic to me. There's a, there's a, the, the problem is that, that that same sort of narrative gets pushed on any side. With, and, and now I'm going to say the you lost get over it side, which is going to make me feel like a terrible person. But no, I, I personally felt that... No, I've, I've never seen that at a conference before. It was actually I've, I've never seen I've never seen a hand vote either. I think the entire thing was ridiculous. Personally, like, you know, you know me, massive Remainer, appeared yep. um, things with yourself before. Well, this is, this is the point that I'm going to get to eventually, is the fact that Jeremy Corbyn, one man, killed 
the Remain campaign. But I'm going to come on to that. We're still on UBI. I want to move on to voting yeah, reform. Yeah. Because if you ask the people out there on the streets what one thing that needs to change with the Visage system, they will say, I'm, I'm sick of the way it is. First past the post, nobody likes it. Nobody wants it, except for the Tories, because it means that for 75 of the last 100 years, they've been in power, even when they didn't get over 50% of the vote, because you only need 38% in any given constituency to generally win in a first-past-the-post system. That is a genuine... Where was it? Well worded criticism. It was nowhere to be seen, and it absolutely should have been front and centre. It should have been front and okay. centre. Any, any kind of revolution, well, I hate to use the phrase revolutionary movement, but if you're looking for a movement of change, then change, you know, holistic change was often talked about by the Labour Party in the top, and I think that it was completely failed to be adhered to. The first thing okay. that should have gone on is proportional representation. Yes, Straight absolutely. Led course, the way. In order to get that, you had to be smart. You had to use the first past the post system in order to get into power, and then you could have a proportional representation system. But Labour didn't want that. Not only is it against Labour's ethos, I guess, to stand candidates down in constituencies they have no hope of winning, in the hope that someone from the SNP, someone from Plaid Cymru, someone from the Greens, or someone from the Lib Dems could take that seat from the Tories. It's actually against the constitution of Labour to do that. It's against the constitution of the damn thing they have to vote. They have to field a candidate in every single constituency of Great Britain, not Northern Ireland, but Great Britain. Again, I think that's a legitimate criticism. It should, that should also have happened. But I would also argue that's a two-way street. The, the point of the constitution, completely on board. Yes, they, they, would, they will sit here and argue that, oh, we couldn't have done that. We couldn't stand people down because of the constitution. No, the constitution can be broken and then it can be changed. And then changed. Either people, you violate it. And then you are a judge for the violation. It is okay. not. It's not a code. Of, uh, a codis that stops you from doing something. It, you're, you're going to the virtual conference, I guess, in September. The yeah, I will be. Uh, actually, no, I won't be because I actually I, I spat my dummy out and resigned my membership. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. Well, okay. Um, I, I did that, but I did that because of Corbyn. So I've come back now because Corbyn's right. gone. Uh, I say, well, I'll okay. give it. I'll give it time. I'll, I'll judge the outcome of the conference. I think. <laughs> Be, I can't be that critical, so I've got to put myself in a position now. I can't be critical of the outcome of the conference because I'm not participating. But yeah. I can then say I agree with it and I'll come back into the falls. Yeah. And go from okay. there. I'm going to be very thingy. Yeah, I, I was one of those guys. Although you might not know it because I didn't cut my membership card up and put it on Twitter like many, many, and I'm going to use the phrase here, assholes did. <laughs> no, I, I was kicked out. I was actually kicked out of the Labour Party. Were you kicked out for the uh, campaign for the Liberal Democrats? No, I wasn't part of the Liberal Democrats. I only joined the Liberal, Liberal Democrats because Jeremy Corbyn came to me in a dream and told me to join the Liberal Democrats. As soon as he was gone, I left. But the, no, this was before that. I actually, I actually wrote a letter to my MP, Stephen Twigg in Liverpool, West Derby, saying, I, I, I will come and stand against you in the next election if you vote with the Conservatives for the activation of Article 50. Because there was a three-line whip at the time by Jeremy Corbyn. Now, the three other Liverpool MPs vote, didn't did, either abstain or voted against it. My local MP voted for it. Uh, and, and don't forget the, 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 the monumental scumbaggery of this whole thing. They allowed it to go through with no amendments, no provisos, nothing to protect the rights and privileges of EU citizens living here and British citizens living in the EU 27. Nothing about Gibraltar, nothing about Northern Ireland, nothing about Scotland, nothing about Wales, just nothing. And it was a three line whip. And this is what I was gonna come on to. Um, I, I, I wanna talk about the Remain campaign for a little bit and how Jeremy Corbyn at every step of the way undermined the campaign. And basically he stole all my hope that we could stop this. And then he, you know, the icing on the cake was gifting the Conservatives an election in the middle of winter when Labour had been polling appallingly badly. And don't forget, Labour and the Lib Dems were both given polling data, very accurate polling data done by Best for Britain, which showed that if they had an election the next day, the Tories would win an 80-seat majority. That sort of kick-started my interest in, 
get involved in, in the Remain campaign, such as it was at that time, because in April 2017, Theresa May called a snap election, which I wasn't expecting. I thought they would just stay in power till 2020, this year. Um, and uh, so I came back, because I was living on my island in Panama at the time, off grid, my solar power and my coconuts and rainwater collection <laughs> tanks. I know, and my dog Campesino, and I'll sit at the end of the boat dock and fish. It was great. And I had internet connection, so it was like your log cabin in the woods with internet connection fantasy, but... Uh, that is the, that right. is the dream, that is the yeah. dream. Anyway, so I left my island, of Ginger Island. If anyone's watching this and wants to invest in an island and make it into a little bit of an eco-retreat, please get in touch. Uh, or visit gingerisland.com, which is my website, Ginger Island. Uh, but anyway, I, ret I returned home from Ginger Island to, to run against um, Stephen Twigg in the second safest Labour seat in the country. I lost by 36,000 votes, but my mum voted for me, and that's the main thing. That is the important thing. Yeah. Anyway, so that, that got me involved with uh, Liverpool for Europe and the other Remain groups. And um, we were fighting the whole time with one arm tied behind our back because we would have marches, we would have rallies, we would have events, and Jeremy Corbyn was always nowhere to be seen. And not only did he just not, I don't know, stay, he could have just stayed at home that day, but no, he always had to make a point and send a tweet out of himself, hey, look at me, there's a million people in London protesting against the government's flagship policy, flagship policy. but I'm in Switzerland, I'm in Morecambe, ha 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 ha. And that is the actions of a, of a sociopath. That's not, that's not some kindly granddad figure who's looking out for the best thing for the nation and ourselves and wants a, a socialist revolution. It's someone who looks at a million people protesting against the government and says, I don't want their votes. Is it someone that says, I don't want their votes? Or is it someone that says that I don't agree with them? Because I've never believed Jeremy Corbyn was a Remainer, ever. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. He, he never was. He was Alexateer. Since the 1970s, he's been exactly. Very yeah. much. I mean, my, my dad often jokes that he thinks his Brexit credentials were mired in the idea that we could have joined the Warsaw Pact back in the 70s. But, uh, you know, that's probably a on my dad's side. I, 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 I think that's probably accurate. Um, but going back to him not turning up at things, um, it, it, it just demoralised the whole thing. All those marches... Essentially, they're not going to change the minds of anyone who votes for the bloody UKIP party or the Brexit party or the BNP or, or the Conservatives. They're not going to change anyone's minds. They were there to show Jeremy Corbyn that there was a huge amount of people, activists. These aren't just people who vote once every five years or so. These are people who are prepared to get on a bus or a train, travel all the way to London and, and, and protest on the street. There was a million of them. Now, if he had come out for a second referendum, said we are going to remain and been a strong, effective leader, uh, which he wasn't at any point in this whole situation. He would have had a million activists with, uh, with, going along with it, knocking on people's doors in the middle of winter, saying, vote Labour. Well, he, but he, he didn't he want did it. Have those people. He, did have, he did have millions of people knocking on doors. So I think you, you're getting different... Millions. Doors. But to, arg to argue that saying that I'm going to get a second, pushing for a second referendum is a massive vote winner. Liberal Democrat Party was destroyed on that platform. No, Liberal Democrats are idiots. Liberal Democrats said that they were going to, if they get into power, because, uh, what's her face? Uh, Lady Gatsby from Swinson? Scotland, yeah. She says, oh, if I get in, I'm going to be Prime Minister and I'm going to revoke Article 50. And you're like, no, no, you can't just revoke it. I'm a massive Remainer. And I was like, no, 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 no. We have to have a referendum, a free and fair referendum. That is absolutely clear that people do not want to leave the EU anymore because they've been presented with the evidence that it's going to be awful and that the Tories lied in the first place. Je uh, uh, what's his name? Nigel Farage lies. But one of the biggest crimes of this whole debacle was the fact that 35% of Labour voters voted to leave the EU, 35%. Why? Why would they vote against their own workers' rights? Why would they vote against their own better interests and the wealth of the nation that we can spend on the NHS, that we can spend on housing and education, all the important stuff? A week before the referendum in 2016, half of all registered Labour voters, or you know, people who said they vote Labour, 
didn't know if Labour were for or against staying in the EU. And that's damning. I think that is damning, but I'd also argue that knowing whether or not my party, my shirt, the party whose shirt I wear are for or against something specific, drove my vote that much in that particular referendum, people... You don't think it would have made a difference? Yeah, I mean, it was a knife-edge referendum. Yeah, with, yeah exactly, but for the first time, I think, in my lifetime, people who went to that poll knew in their mind what they wanted. Rightly or wrongly, ill-informed or not, they knew what they wanted. I, I would I would counter that with the most Googled search term the day after the referendum being what is the EU. There's a difference between understanding what they weren't voted for and knowing what they wanted. <laughs> right there. I know that but, sounds stupid, but we had years and years and years of the EU not really being defended by yes, any political party. By anyone. But it especially was not by Jeremy Corbyn, who called it a mechanised Frankenstein. Who, who, he did call who, him mechanised Frankenstein, and he called the people it... of, 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 of Ireland, he went over to Ireland, he did a speech about how they should all vote no on the second referendum on the Lisbon Treaty. He did, yet for some reason they put him front and centre of the Remain campaign. Why? Because they knew that he would fuck things up for socialism. Why do you think... Why do you think... Who, that, no, the, that, that's a good question. So to many Conservatives were... Why do you think so many Conservatives were so happy to leave him in, in charge? No, no, forget, forget being in charge of Labour. Why was he in charge of the yep. movement? Well, he wasn't, was he? No, he was nowhere to be seen. He went on holiday during the campaign. Hey, I, wait, 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 wait. That's, you know, to, to use our good friend's news. Fake news, man. Fake news. He didn't go on holiday. He did more. Oh, he, he, did. Wasn't, he was nowhere to be seen for a fortnight. He and did a more appearances. He did more and, appearances and a week than any before of the, the referendum, as I've just said, 50% of Labour voters didn't know whether Labour were for or against it. Well, but again, that brings me back to the point of who, who the hell put him in charge of it? Why was he thrust to the centre of that? There were so many good candidates in the Labour Party that should have run that. Because they ran the Labour Party with an iron fist and any dissent was stamped upon in, in the most brutal way. You had a, a, a party where... Alistair Campbell, who arguably is the most Labour Labour person that Ooh, you know has been around for okay. donkey's years, got kicked out of the party straight away, straight away, the, the, the day he said that he voted Lib Dem. This is uh, but that's just the, that's the, time, the application, that's the application of the rules, guy, which I'll argue are wrong. Was, but. was the guy who tweeted uh, congratulations to George Galloway for winning in Birmingham against the Labour candidate in 2012. It's all right when he does it. But well, that's, uh, I, I, 2012 I wasn't on the books, I don't believe. But, uh, when, when, it, when it comes to the thing that we haven't touched on yet, which is the anti-Semitism, that wasn't jumped on straight away. And things were allowed to be said, and people were reinstated, and it was, it was quite frankly disgraceful. But we'll come on to that. We'll come on to that. Um, I just want to talk at the moment about the way Corbyn undermined the I, I do want, I do want to pull you up on one point there and that is the okay, idea Alistair Campbell is labor of labor of labor Alistair well, Campbell is. is the labor of the late 80s 90s and early 2000s not the principles of the formation of the party he was widely against that um, he often referred to um, uh, Ed Miliband as the emissary to planet fuck because he was the one that brought to the left wing he had he had very little interest in union protections. He had very little interest in protecting workers' rights beyond what he had to do with the EU. He never really was very vocal proponent of the EU until later on, until we got to the point of having a referendum. I think if you look at Labour policy during the Blair years and even into the Brown years, and I, I would probably excuse him for the three-year period at the end because the man was ill. I don't want to judge a man when he wasn't at his prime, but at his prime, he was not left wing. He was definitely centre right. He occupied Ooh, okay. the brand that Cameron used to win the election. I think he was an electioneer. But is this is this the re is this the rebranding of, of Labour? And this is another mistake that Labour made under Corbyn was going back over the time that they were last in government and saying to all the people who might vote for them, "Hey, remember last time we were in government? We were fucking awful." Why not vote for us now? Because we're better. Yes, I think there was a disproportionate amount of power wielded by Lansdowne. Lansdowne, that's his name, isn't it? Leader of Momentum. 
Landsman, yeah, yeah. Landsman, John Landsman. Landsman, Landsman that's it, yeah, Landsman. Sorry, John Landsman. educated Landsman. Oh, yeah, so momentum had way too much power and momentum was way too skewed to my generation who were horribly disenfranchised by Tony Blair. And if you ask the majority of people my age what they remember about Tony Blair, war in Iraq, siding with George Bush, that's it. And, and no attempt was made by Labour to reform that record by saying, but here's all the good stuff that he did. No attempt exactly. was made at all. Blair was made into the devil. Anyone who was to uh, seen as being the right of Corbyn was branded the Blairite and told to fuck off and join the Tories. It was abusive. It was horrific. It was bullying on, 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 this, gra on this grand scale all over Facebook, all over Twitter where you either conformed and thought that this very mediocre man, Jeremy Corbyn, was the messiah and the only man who could possibly save us <laughs> from the Tories, which is obvious nonsense. The only reason he got in for so long was because that idiot Milband, Miliband brought in a rule saying, if you pay three pounds, you get to choose who the leader of Labour is going to be. Even that, if you're but a that's a, that's a good rule. That is a good if you're rule. massive Nazi. No, it's that a is, terrible that's rule. A, that's a good it means rule. That, it means that you get entryism, you get people like myself, who at that moment, at that point, have been uh, a, uh, a Labour member for 18 years. My vote was worth the same for leader. It was worth the same as a Nazi who had just signed up to put in a lame duck leader to assure the passage of Brexit and the Tories get a massive it's, it's not. It wasn't quite the, you couldn't sign up on Monday and vote for him on Tuesday. There were some rules put in place for that. No, I, 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 hang on. No, you, you, you went on the website as an associate member of Labour, you paid your three pounds and you got your vote. That was you, had to be, you had to be a member for a certain period of time before you could vote in the leadership election. You couldn't do it the next... Yeah, we just, we just had that with this one. So what? It was like, okay, we're going to get a new leader because they lost the election in 2015. Okay, everyone who joined the day after were allowed to vote for the new leader. Yeah, but you couldn't. We wasn't put in place. What I'm saying is you couldn't. That year. What I'm saying is you couldn't join the day before the election. You could join no, the day. after. You could. If, you know, if if you got on your WhatsApp Nazi group and wrote to all your Nazi friends, hey, join Labour. That well, don't even join Labour. You don't have to join. You just have to give them an email address and three quid. And and guess what? You get to vote on who is going to be in charge of Labour for the next few years. And the warning signs were there. Jeremy Corbyn was never particularly popular. And towards the end, I mean, he was getting positivity ratings, you know, uh, approval ratings, sorry, of minus 40. Minus 40. To put that into context, Trump's approval ratings are minus 10. And it's Trump. He was four times more unpopular than Donald Trump. I'm like, mind blown. If you're in a job where you have to get people on side, looking at those figures and saying, hey, I'm not going to stand down. I am going to stand in a general election, knowing that it's going to be a huge landslide defeat for Labour because I'm leader. I'm going to do that. It just smacks of absolute uh, uh, insane amounts of ego or stupidity or maybe a bit of both, do you not think? I wouldn't join you on those two. Naivety, maybe? Naivety? Yeah, a a belief that who, like, who would have replaced him and Starmer. Ret that Starmer. manifesto and retained that manifesto? Starmer. No, Starmer hasn't. Starmer. He's, dropped the second, he's dropped the second referendum straight away. Straight yeah, away. There's no point. It's too late now. <laughs> We're out. It's too late. There's no point in having a second referendum on, on something that's already been done. We can have a referendum on rejoining, but has he pushed, it. has, it's has he pushed any laws to stop No Deal? No. We're gonna get no deal. Did Jeremy, did Jeremy Corbyn push no did, deal? He knows we're gonna get no Cor deal. Yeah, but did Jeremy Corbyn push any laws to stop no deal? It was his excuse not to have an election before October was, oh, we we need to make sure that no deal is off the table, and then yeah. we will have an election. No deal was never taken off the table, as we have seen now, because we're heading towards no deal. Now, anyone who knew anything about the situation with Brexit and the EU could have said to him, "Hey, a dickhead, right, Jeremy, right." If you give them an election, no deal can still happen. And here's how. You know, maybe draw a little diagram in, in, um, in crayons for him to understand. Look, Jeremy, here it is. No deal could still happen, and he still had an election. So he's a, either a liar or a fraud or an idiot or an egotistical maniac, or maybe he's 
hopelessly naive. Or, or, stay with me here, he believed he could win. The same as I believed he could win. So does that make me you, 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 an idiot you or a cult follower? You looked, I ju- I genuinely you looked at the polling and thought, this, this party's going hand, far. Hand on heart, right up until the moment that exit poll came out, I genuinely, hand on heart, believed we would get a, a Labour-led uh, coalition government. I wow. Would, hand on heart, believed that. And I think that... I didn't. <laughs> I, I think uh, that speaks volumes to the political bubbles we live in. Well, yeah, I... I, I I just living here in Durham, just talking to people. They hated Jeremy Corbyn, left and right, up down. On that, I always always struggled to find anyone to be able to articulate why they hated him. I had people that said oh. they hated him because he was a Remainer. I had people that hated yes. him because he was a Brexiteer. He was a leader. Yes, what a great leader! What a great leader of men and women. <laughs> what would you, like, would, you not even, would, you even, would you not even accept even the, the modicum of credibility to the argument that his representation was different to him? Now we can. No, he no was I, think he, I, had I, I, I think he was a deluded scumbag. I mean, look, he lost a general election to Theresa May, to the, the May bot, the shittest leader that that the Tories have had in years, and he lost Ooh, the Oh, I don't know. She, she's, she's getting a run for her money. Yes. Okay. All right. Not, not just shit, but unpopular. That's the thing with Boris Johnson. He's shit, but he's popular. That's true. People like him. He's charismatic. He, can, he, he makes people laugh. And that's what people... A lot of people who don't really care about politics, which is most normal people, that's what they want. They want someone who they put the TV... Oh, he's, he's Boris. Oh, he's a good... He's a good... I like to go... For, for a drink with him. Whereas no one in their right mind would want to go for a drink with Jeremy Corbyn. That would be like, oh my God, it'd be like a wake. To be fair, I think I, this, I think I even said this to you on FaceTime. <laughs> I, would, I, I would probably have picked Boris Johnson to go to the bar with because I wouldn't want to talk about jam marrows and the... <laughs> exactly. the and you're a massive but, Corbynite. But at the same time, like the things he stood for were important. What? What did he stand for? Support of the people that support this country. As That's opposed- so fuzzy. Support of the people. Well, everyone wants that, don't they? You go no, off the not- street and say, do you support the people? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but he, he had policies that supported and explained why the people, like why education needs to be invested in, why private schools are bad, why the national rail infrastructure is crap, why public works processes are good. But and where if- were they? Where was his opinion it's about HS2? What was, what, was Jeremy Corbyn, what was Jeremy Corbyn going to do about HS2? Uh, he was going to do nothing his opinion? because no one was talking about HS2 at all. What, what was his plan for, for Brexit again? He was, going to, uh, he, he was going to go to Brussels. He was going to negotiate a new exit deal, a new withdrawal agreement. Which, he, which he published and was widely right. accepted by the EU. Uh, and and then, which basically was the same kind of withdrawal agreement. It covered the same four main points that the Tories' withdrawal agreement covered. Political declaration is just a declaration; it's nothing binding, as we're discovering but it, now. But it would, um, but it would have seen us retain things like the workers' hour, uh, the workers' hours directive. I can't remember the official word of that. It was our choice. It was our choice to do that. But I mean, the fact is that he was going to go back and renegotiate something that had been negotiated over many years with the EU, keep the country in limbo for a few more months or even years, because it has to be negotiated. The EU sign off on it and say, yes, we agree to this withdrawal agreement. Then they were gonna have a second referendum on the withdrawal agreement, and he wouldn't say whether he would be for or against it. That's not leadership, mate. That isn't clear. That isn't something you can explain to people in three words on the doorstep, like get Brexit done. Or- Right, okay, so so, so on on that point- is is that how is that how we should be running democratic elections in this country on the best catchphrase? No, but things need to be simple because people have got busy lives and they can't all do the politics courses and learn about the. Right now, if I was if I was if I was going to argue in bad faith now, I'd say that you're calling people stupid. But I'm not going to do that. I no, think I'm not. I'm not saying they're stupid. I'm saying they've got better things to do. We get, we get shit all that's the time. Code. That's, young that's people, a code word. Oh, oh you're, well, I'm not young anymore. Middle-aged people. But yeah, young people get shit all the time. Uh, bloody millennials. They don't vote. They don't vote. They don't vote. And it's like, hang on. If you're in your 20s right now, 
you're struggling to get on the housing ladder, you're struggling to get a job, you're falling in love, you're, you're getting married, you're thinking about starting a family, you've you, you got all these things going on, and you want a party, and, and at the same time, you're supposed to give a crap about the people running the government. I mean, no. You, you, yeah, you but the, but that, demograph that demographic you just mentioned skews heavily towards Corbyn, voted heavily towards Labour. Yeah, but they don't, they, 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 first of all, they don't vote. And secondly, like, it, it, it's one of those things where younger people like this stuff, great. Let's think of a clever way of getting a Labour government into power so they can actually do these things. To do that, you need to appeal to at least 40% of the electorate so you can win an election in, in the right parts of the country. But, but, then, target, but then what you're saying right is, I'm going to do one, I'm going to say one thing to get my 40% vote, and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to do something different. No, no, no. Things just and then four years later, you get voted No, no. I'm not calling people stupid. I'm not saying that things need Sorry, to be... Sorry, just to clarify, I wasn't accusing you of doing that. I was suggesting if I was going to argue about that faith, I would do that. Yeah. I know. Cheers, Bill. No, um, I'm not saying people are stupid. I'm not saying that um, we, we need to, it all needs to descend to slogans. But what Labour were not interested in doing at all, at the leadership level, they were interested in doing this lower down, with great people like Jess Phillips, who supported us as Remainers to the hilt, he didn't bother explaining anything to people. So they were all about just telling people stuff rather than actually trying to educate people why the EU is a good thing. I think, I think there was a failure to spot that the rules of the game were changing and, in, and then they tried to lean into it with their own catchphrases and their own shit. And I think you're right, they, they fell away from their explanations. But at the same time, on the occasions that they did attempt to explain something, the topic which we're about to talk about would derail any potential conversation. As soon as someone started to make a sale, no, this is why this is why I, can point, I, five, geez, I can point to five. I can point to five or six interviews in which salient points are being made. Smash cut to anti-Semitism. Okay, this is why I've left anti-Semitism till the end. I want to talk a bit more about the Remain campaign and how he undermined. Okay, let's talk us. about the Remain campaign. Yeah. Um, he made it very difficult for us to get the momentum that we need that we needed. And we were there. We were there protesting. We were doing street stalls every week. But when I tried to help Manchester for Europe last summer, uh, organize an event, um, an anti-Brexit you know, anti event in the Castlefield Bowl on the day of the Tory party conference, the people running, uh, um, what are they called? The People's Assembly from Labour went out of their way to make things difficult for us. And it, it was it was this point where, I mean, okay, I could understand if we were standing for two very, very different issues, but to me, we were all standing together against the Conservatives, not wanting these clowns and fruitcakes and sociopaths to be leading this country anymore. And there were two incidents that really stick in my head. The first is when I was first told that the... Uh, that, that the People's Assembly uh, people were organizing a, a march on the same day that we were thinking of having our march by the police liaison in, for, for Manchester Police. And I remember her telling me um, that there's another group protesting on that day and they don't want to see a single EU flag, which made me think that it was the Brexit party. I thought it was Nigel Farage who was protesting against the Conservatives not being brexit -y enough. And to discover that actually, no, it was a sect of Labour, and it would be Labour, and the, the, it was the unions marching in London, uh, sorry, in Manchester, on the same day as the Tory party conference started, and we would be marching. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that these people who should be our friends, who should be our comrades against the Conservatives, were that indoctrinated in the belief that we, as pro-Europeans, were the bad guys. We were worse than the Tories. And it was just like, what, hey? And the second bit was when, um, it was a few months later, and we were having a bit of argy-bargy about, I, don't, I hope people watching this don't mind me saying this, because obviously this goes on behind the scenes. You, you see a march, you see a rally, you don't really think about the stuff that goes into organising it. We had a meeting with the deputy head of Manchester City Council, the head of police uh, for Manchester metropolitan area, and um, we were in a big square table. And, and the chief of police says to us, you're all on the same side. Why don't you all just march together? And I was just like, I I'd love to. 
but the other side were just like, they looked at me like I was scum. Like, how dare I even suggest <laughs> that we do such a thing? And if we had marched together, it would have been a bigger march. There would have been more people. It would have been more colourful. And we were all marching for the same thing. Down with the Tories. Yeah, so I think, to answer that, you know, that's reprehensible in my view. They absolutely should have worked together with you. And again, I'm not going to excuse. I'm going to seek to explain here. Uh, because, you know, in the, core of, in the core of opinion, I'm definitely on the, um, the mitigation points here as opposed to any kind of potential for innocence. So there was this prevalent view that the Brexit argument was lost. And it was lost after the second election of May. And that any... Wow. Did they not any, notice the million people marching in London? I did. I did, but a million people marched against the war in Iraq as well. Yeah, but not on three separate occasions. And there was moment. nothing at that point that we could do about the stupid war in Iraq because it that, was that's going Perhaps I'm playing false equivalency there. So I do this apologize. was something that we were aiming for. We were pushing for a final say referendum on the deal. We were saying, look, we're trying to be fair here. We're not trying to overrule the, 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 the referendum, the fraud referendum, which I don't think has any legal precedent or legal merit whatsoever because it irreparably Agreed. changes the constitution of the United Kingdom. And you, you couldn't change the constitution of a pigeon fancier's club unless you got 66%, a super majority. Well, it's a very good job we don't have a written down constitution, isn't it? Otherwise, well, it is. It's very handy. Be legal it? arguments, not rhetorical, rhetorical but, arguments. But the, going, going back to the activation of Article 50, the three line whip by Jeremy Corbyn to do that gave the Tories the power to rewrite 45 years of laws and statutes. The Tories of all people, why would you give them that unless you were working for them? I, I can't get to that level of conspiracy. What, what I would argue it gives is Article 50 to be enacted and then you respect the, I'm going to throw up in my mouth as I say it, the will of the people. So you can't play, you can't play that you're trying to go against democracy. No, we weren't going against democracy. We were saying, get, get us a deal, show us the deal, and then we will vote on the deal, whether we want to the, the deal um, and you could have you could have it split you could have do you want this deal okay yes so now, no? now I'm going to point out the exact same criticism be, that you have you want to that's say real fuzzy real fuzzy you give me there you've got I'm going to give the same criticism you've laid out that's real fuzzy you're arguing here am I having a yes no referendum on the deal am on I the deal a, a yes deal no deal or stay on the same terms what, it would be no no what's it, that it going to look like well, you just have... Simply explain do, it Do you me. still want to leave the EU? Question mark. Goes to two boxes. Top one, the deal is great. Let's do it. Bottom one is, this deal is crap. Let's negotiate another one. And the other option, it says, right, you know, leave that if you don't think this. Remain in the EU. Okay, so you... And then if, it, if, you get over, if you get 52% of people ticking the top box, saying, I still want to leave no matter what, but I, I don't want this deal. What if, so, so what if you got 48% of people voting your bottom box, then yeah. 26% and of people voted, and 26% in each of the two top boxes? So you split, you split the majority, you split the two top boxes by how many people voted for it. So if 52% says, okay, yeah, we want this, right? Of them, then the, the 48 is discarded. The idea of staying in the EU is discarded. And we say, okay, well, which one won out of the deal or negotiate a new deal? There are two options. Now put down a catchphrase, But I will not. Now put down a catchphrase. It's a final say referendum. There you go, free word. Final say referendum. Give the people the choice. But it's not a final say because if I vote for one of those two boxes, I've got to go into the polls again? No. If you vote, if you vote for having another, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm ardent. I've got, you vote, I've got my I've got my for having another thing. Then yes, you will get another say on the next thing. But that wouldn't so, that wouldn't involve giving the option of staying in the EU. By then, it would be like, okay, we've had two referendums saying we want to leave. Fine, we're leaving. Us Remainers would have packed up and gone home. But we were never given that opportunity. And don't forget, Corbyn didn't back a second referendum until after the disastrous. EU elections in which Labour got 14.1% of the vote. Labour do, ma the major parties do terribly in those elections anyway. Yes, but the Tories changed their leader from the very unpopular Theresa May to the incredibly popular Boris Johnson. 
Labour should have done not, that. But not, not, not off the back of the EU elections. He did it off the back of the EU yeah. deciding that she wasn't a good enough puppet. It was just happens to <laughs> <laughs> but, but they did change the leader and that turned around their electoral, uh, election fortunes. Possibly, possibly. But I mean, <laughs> what I'm struggling to understand with the second round, and this is the thing that really done me, because I would have wanted yeah. either, if, if I'm a daily, sorry, my video was screwing up there. If I'm an avid Daily Mail reader, and I believe yeah. everything being told, I don't understand that everything but guns or everything but armaments is a thing. And I think I can trade on World Trade Organization rules. And I want no deal Brexit because it's the best. How do, where, where's my say for that? How do I get that? I you feel like- have no deal Brexit. Why would you let people vote for something that's a violation of British law? And it's Democracy, you've taken away my right. You're playing into you're playing into an easy narrative to spin on the other no, side. You don't, you don't you don't give them you Perhaps. don't give anyone the option to you know that's like having a referendum to decide whether to kill someone or not. You just don't do it. It's against the law. We're literally about to have law. a referendum about whether to bring back the death penalty. What? That's oh gar guaranteed. You heard it here first. Within the next four years, we'll have a referendum on the death penalty in the UK. I fucking hope not. Oh, it will happen. It will happen. Oh, another one of Corbyn's wonderful legacy with him leaving us no. with 80, 80 strong majority of late of, of Tory MPs. One hundred and sixty-three more Tory MPs than Labour MPs now in in um, in the House of Commons. That that that's Corbyn's legacy. It always will be one of absolute abject. And what my is in, in two years we're going to have another election and Keir Starmer's going to win and a lot of the work that's being done currently will be overturned and then six years later we'll flip back to Conservatives. You know, I don't really no, think... I, 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 I think Keir Starmer has got a mountain to climb. Even Even at the moment, don't. With Boris Johnson's ridiculous, uh, horrific response to this coronavirus crisis which has seen excess deaths of over 60,000 people. That will, that will bring and, this government and yet, down. He still knows. It, the, you see any opinion polls that have been coming out the last couple of weeks, do you think they're doing a good job? Half the country's still saying yes. Half of them are still wait saying until, yes. Wait until we're out of the war time. Because people... I, thought, don't, I don't believe it. I think, I think that... The people thought that Churchill cast, was doing a great job the whole way, but, but, despite the fact that we only really had any success after D-Day. But within, within but just... Failure. Within, within just uh, a few weeks of becoming leader, Keir Starmer, who is presentable and electable and someone that people quite like, he has approval ratings, 60%, 70% higher than Jeremy Corbyn's before he has, the last election. He has a lot more positive media coverage, to be again, fair. Again, we, we, we haven't discussed this, have we, that it's the media's fault. I'm from Liverpool. I don't really I don't, I don't really don't want to get into it. I don't read the tabloids. I'm I right. have a degree in politics. I am a humane activist. And my ability to push the country, to help usher the country towards having a second referendum was absolutely catastrophically sabotaged by one man, Jeremy Corbyn. All those marches were to convince Jeremy Corbyn. All, all the millions spent by Best for Britain on polling data to show that people around the country wanted to stay in the EU now, or to convince one man and his, and his group of advisors, nearly all of whom were privately educated. Never lived in the real world, mate. Never lived in the real world. They just read about the real world in their Tolstoy books or whatever. So the, the problem I face with that is that you're, to scapegoat Jeremy Corbyn for Brexit is to effectively forget everything that ran into the other side of Brexit, the, the, the true Brexiteers that literally wanted to crap the economy so they could make a quick book. Because that's, let's not kill ourselves, that's what Brexit was for. It was to engineer a market crash. But no one ever bothered to argue this at a level of the leadership of the Labour Party. And the, the, the Lib Dems were bloody awful as well. I remember Jo Swinson, like the, I think it was the first time when, after she got made leader, she got to stand up in Parliament and she said, when is the Prime Minister going to do the sensible thing and revoke Article 50? And I sat down again and I was like, what? It just reminded me of stupid uh, student politics where you would get people running for election in student politics and they'll come and stand at the front of a, of, of a, of a lecture theatre instead, instead of saying, uh, we'll, we'll improve the street lighting on the street, student corridor and we'll... 
uh, make sure that the drinks are cheaper in the bar, we'll improve the security with the safety bus that can go and pick students up from anywhere at any time. Here's your emergency number. Make sure that all students have that card in their wallet. No, we have people standing up going, I'm going to stop NATO aggression in the South Balkans. And you're just like- I thought you were going to go a different direction there. And I was about to say what? I'm guilty of that because I what? won a student election based on introducing lions to the wildlife reserve uh, and <laughs> East program out of the university. I bet you won. Uh, I beat reopen nominations. <laughs> so that's something. But yeah, the, the, the point is like, like she she was awful. But this video is not about Joe Swinson, who who. No, we it's could, not. We no, could no, do no. a video on it, but I, I doubt that I'll get anyone to defend her. Um, well, I doubt you'll get any clicks because no one knows who she is anymore. <laughs> if, if if we if we just strip everything else away. Forget about everything else. Forget about anti-Semitism for a moment. Forget about the uh, the, the bad press that, that uh, Jeremy Corbyn got. Forget about his background, anything like that. I'm just talking about his actions or inactions from the beginning of the referendum campaign in 2016 to the general election of 2019. And my question to you, Phil, is if he was a secret agent of the Conservative Party, there to ensure that the Conservatives got Brexit through, no matter what, and no deal Brexit, mind you, and the Tories get a massive landslide victory so they can do what they want for the next five years. What would he have done differently if, if he was actually a spy? Probably not led the Remain movement to start with. Probably, <laughs> pushed, probably would have pushed for Brexit to be the Labour Party policy. I no, think it's much better the way he did it. I, it was, I think it was there's so a very credible argument. I think there's a very credible argument to be made that people at the very top of Labour, including Seamus Mill, including John Landsman, including potentially Jeremy Corbyn himself, wanted or felt that a No Deal Brexit, which provided a cliff edge to the economy and an absolute shit show, may form their best chance of attaining government and installing their vision of socialism. I think there is a credible argument to be made for that. You don't win an election by the other side losing. You, you win know, an election I by disagree, I disagree with that. people I abso- out. You I get fundamentally the disagree who with that. Actually, would want to vote for you. You get them off their asses and voting. No, and no, you, they, you, you win. You win. You win the swings. You win the swing votes to win the election. That's why when Tony Blair was grossly unpopular and went into Gordon Brown, Cameron came in, and it even took a it took a Clegg Cameron coalition at first to do it. People oh, I'm, with okay, I'm, I'm not. I'm not necessarily talking here about uh, like the law. No, 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 no. And I'm saying <laughs> that when try and so- win elections, not the other side lose, because then how do you know that it's what actually people want in a democracy? A democracy is a messy. And, well, these, and, and these last two, the last two general elections have been won off the other side losing, and I think that is that is politics. Yes going to be now. Yes. I think Starmer wins with the Labour Party at the next general election. It will be off the loss of the Conservative parties. Not yes. The, and, 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 and until we get rid of first past the post, first past the post we definitely yeah. need to do. So what we need to do, change Labour's constitution so they can not, so they, they can stand down candidates in, in areas where they won't win, in constituencies where they won't win, and allow the Lib Dem or the Green or the Plaid Cymru or the SNP candidate a free run against the Conservatives. Have a, have a coalition government in 2020 and 2024, coalition government comes in and their first thing that they do is they bring in voting reform. Well, I, I, per- yeah. I personally feel that every single be government should be coalition, basically. Like, you look at the German yes. system. I yes. think, you know, I, without, I getting into, without getting into too much, agree. without getting into too much of the background, I genuinely feel that Brexit and the disintegration of the British Isles, in my opinion, is purely down to the disenfranchisement of millions and millions of people who, yeah. for a reason, voted UKIP, voted BMP, voted this, voted that, and never represented once. Because had we had proportional representation going back in the 90s, we'd have had a BMP MP member. He'd have looked fucking stupid. We'd have had UKIP MPs who'd have looked fucking stupid. We'd have had more Green MPs. We'd have had Plaid Cymru. Uh, um, green MPs would be good. We'd have had SMPs potentially yeah. within, you know, within like Brit, like English constituencies. Potentially. But, but Starmer's got to be smart about this. And, and, and Jeremy Corbyn wasn't smart about anything that he did. 
He went in like a bull in a china shop. He lost the referendum. He lost the 2017 general election. Well, you're, he, you're he arguing he actually won the referendum. Down. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he, his vote went down across local government, all across the country, and in the 2019 uh, EU elections, as I've said, 14.1% of the vote. He was getting consistent a polling, polling data from all across the polling spectrum, and I know that YouGov and uh, you know Optimum are not probably the best people to get you information from, or Lord Ashcroft polls, but there are other polling data companies and the information that best for Britain, who are very much not conservatives, uh, pulled together. At the cost of millions of pounds, by the way, which all said the same thing. Unless Labour gets a new leader, they are going to be demolished by the conservatives in the election. Dominic oh, God, looks you at this and goes, great, let's go for an election. Let's push them for an election. Milne looks at this and goes, this is lies. This isn't true. No, I'm like, I, I think I think Milne I think Milne looks at that data and says if we can convince the Liberal Democrats and the SNP to stand down, we win. Um, even even in cases where they, they, they would allow them to, they wouldn't have won. Here in County Durham, there were seven constituencies. Four of them are now bloody conservative. Thanks to Jeremy Corbyn. Thanks to that really really unpopular guy being in charge of the party. That was the only party that could stop the Conservatives from winning the election. I just I haven't even mentioned anti-Semitism. <laughs> oh, no, yes. I think you know. We we may need to have a different we may need to have a different podcast on that one. <laughs> hour. And uh, but no, I think do, to, to put do it I have purely, a point. Do I have a point, Mister um, uh, Representative for the Defence? I think you do, and again, I'm in mitigation. I think that in laying the blame solely at his door, forgives yes. the actions of others. I think it forgives Joe Swinson's involvement in allowing for the Conservative Party to come in. She, she, she stood up, and I think possibly, this is fueled by the media, here comes the tinfoil hat, the media, a lot of people, they were a lot more fucking popular than they were. They told Joe Swinson to the point she went on television, and I yeah. believe she believed she could be the next Prime Minister. Yes, she did. What an idiot. What okay. an absolute and idiot. But she I, they were given the polling data that said, no, they won't. Exactly. And, and and here, here comes the, the, here comes the bit where I get absolutely... Did, did hit, different sorry, kinds of scenarios. And one of the scenarios was that Nigel Farage stands down all of his Brexit Party candidates in Tory seats and only fields them in Labour seats. Yeah, how did no one see that was going to happen? They did! The best for Britain put it in their polling data and said... That, that's what I mean, yeah, sorry. I mean, in terms of these geniuses that run everything, no, no one saw that coming, despite the fact that I ran that big piece in Byline Times about how Brexit Party is a con. And this is, this is the point at which I lose every single left-wing, you know, Corbyn Easter that's signed in here. I liked <laughs> Jess Phillips. Yeah, I liked her too. She got a massive media screw job because they convinced her she could run the Labour Party. And she believed it. And I think I, th I think she'd make a, a fairly decent leader. I, I would have liked I to see her as as deputy under Kia, because I, I, think it she, think it I like her nice. attitudes. I liked her attitudes. I like the fact that my my criticism of her would be, and this is the criticism. Bear in mind, she is an excellent constituency MP. Yeah, that would be my criticism of her as a potential leadership candidate. <laughs> I think they, I but, think those are two I think those are two different skill sets. Whereas Kia Starmer, yeah, but yeah, I mean, she saw the way the the wind was going, and she said, "I'm I'm going to go for Kia Starmer," you know. And, and um, I think, did, but, I think but that, again, I, I genuinely believe that she believed she had a chance. In this, well, in that's not just the Richard media, Virgin that, probably believed he had a chance. That's the people whispering poison into these people's ears, and it is, and I think, and I think that's ego. Speaks, and saying to them, Jeremy, ignore the fact that you're polling at minus 40. You can win this thing. And Phil, you said right. earlier that you were one of the people thinking that he could win this thing when he was ridiculously unpopular. Yeah. But I think that's, uh, that speaks to the power of the media narrative has. That There were lots of people that thought that she could win it. People that thought Joe Swinson could win it. There were people that thought... Yeah, he... Joe Swinson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, let, let's not forget the political powerhouse is Chukarumana. Yeah. He thought he would be Deputy Prime Minister. I mean, he also thought that scummy people in nightclubs, but, you know. 
<laughs> I quite like Shooker. Uh, anyway. I, I kind of liked him, but then he really upset me on a personal level in an interaction I had with him, where I felt he took right. people that's, that's not getting involved in that. It was the same reason I fell out with uh, Tristan Hunt, because I had a personal thing with him. And obviously, you know, that to me is the most important thing, how they personally treat me. <laughs> and Tristan joke. Hunt is, is, isn't the greatest name. No, he's not. But he was touted a long time as a potential future leader of the party. But again, again, I really want to key in on whether or not people agree that the media caused this. And I think they definitely had a substantial part to play. Because look at the independent group for change. How much positive coverage did they get? How much did they believe in themselves? Well, they thought that they were going to get all the people. Call. No, they thought they were going to get a lot of Labour support, uh, Labour MPs to come over to them. That, that was their thinking. But obviously, it didn't happen. So they ended up just being sort of twelve. That's because they, they, they were told one, they would. At one point, at one point, they were a bigger party in in Parliament than, than the Liberal Democrats. Then, they were. Every yeah. single day, there was a story that this person's going to defect next. This person's going to defect next. This person's going to defect. Yeah. And they didn't. And they didn't because and they you didn't. have people like myself who are hot headed and like I, I'm not standing for this. I'm 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 out. What a gang of clowns. You have people like my friend uh, Johnny Reynolds, MP, who's the MP for uh, Staley Bridge and Hyde. And his attitude was, I'm just going to keep my head down and he'll be gone one day. Jeremy Corbyn will be gone one day. And he's, he, he did. He's, he stayed in. He's, he's now been elected for the fourth time or something in 10 years uh, as MP. And, and now he's the shadow uh, secretary for pensions. Um, so, I mean, I, I, there's two ways of thinking about it. Should people have stayed in the party? And then once Corbyn was gotten rid of, and that's the only, the one silver lining of all this is Jeremy Corbyn's finally gone, although he is tweeting more than he ever did when he was leader. Um, uh, and, tw the, 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 the Twitter graphics would disagree with that. What is interesting, though, is he gets nearly no, like nowhere near as much trolling, which almost suggests that there's some kind of robots uh, about on that website. But Oh, yeah, I, I, I trolled him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not a robot. <laughs> I just hate him. Anyway, um, yeah. So we got, but I, I, I genuinely think that um, for at least two of the MPs in Labour who left, le le cons uh, the Liverpool MPs, uh, Louise Elman and um, and Luciana uh, Berger, Luciana Berger, both left because the strain they were put under was just absolutely untenable and I know Luciana not that well but I always remember back in 2018 I think La Labour had the um, they, they had the conference in Liverpool and I was there with the Liverpool for Europe lot we had a march a march for Europe and at the march were various pro European MPs like Luciana and we were marching together and me being me I was near the front with a my little megaphone of course you were doing, doing all the chants and stuff and at one point I started singing where's Jeremy Corbyn the look that Luciana Berger turned around and gave me was one of abject terror and it shut me off like i honestly i just i just went okay put the microphone down she just looked at me like please please don't don't and i've not seen that look of terror in anyone's eyes before and to cause and let's say an employee of your company to be put up put up with that kind of i don't know abuse <laughs> is um it's just beyond the pale. It's absolutely beyond the pale. And that, that, was my, that was my part of it. That was my sort of window into that situation that she was in at that time. And I also met with Louise Elman and she seemed to feel exactly the same way, trapped in a party, wanting to you know, go the distance and get to the point where Corbyn wasn't in charge anymore. Um, but just couldn't hack it because of all the bullying and the horribleness that was being dumped on them and the lack of anything, any kind of support from, the, from, from above or discipline for the people who were doing this stuff. So, so on, the discipline, on the discipline thing, in order to be disciplined by the Labour Party, you have to be a member of the Labour Party. 
Now, yes. I, 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 two statements quickly. Gavin Williamson as a member. Is he really a member of the Labour Party now? Oh, not Gavin, Gavin Williamson. Uh, I was going to say Chris, 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 sorry, Chris. Chris Williamson. You're Chris right. Williamson. Oh, that's stricken from the record. Oh, that's stricken from the record. So, I want to make, make two statements clear. One, anti-Semitism in the Labour Party exists. I have seen it. I have heard it. I have challenged it. Two, anti-Semitism within the Labour movement also exists and is more prevalent than it is within the party. Now, generally, the... Anti-Semitism I've experienced whilst in the D Labour Party has never been, you know, Jewish people are subhuman, Jewish people this, Jewish people that. It is usually grained in conspiratorial. You've got, you know, the amount of times people would talk to me about the Rothschilds and I would go, are you fucking kidding me? Step outside and I'll fucking lamp you if you say that one more time. Not just because it's factually untrue that Rothschilds ru ruled anything and the richest Rothschild alive today is like over a thousand on the fucking rich list. Two, you are, you are using Rothschilds as a synonym for Jews. You are saying Jewish people run the economic system. You are saying Jewish people run the media. You are saying capitalism is a, tr a tenant of Judaism. Okay, that is anti-Semitism. That exists. I have seen it. I have made reports on it. I've seen people disciplined for it. I've seen people move from the party for it. Okay, within the Labour movement, as a, and I separate that out from the Labour Party itself, it is much more prevalent and there is this weird sort of i want to call it a yuppie not millennial because that's the wrong word a hipster feeling to jump in on the left and to jump right into some very complex things and go okay middle east israel's the bad guy all jews are israeli dual dual um what's the word uh not not dual nationality dual dual allegiance or not questioning this and everybody who's jewish must be into oh. israel Dual allegiance, mate. Remember the Catholics? Remember when we, we, we burnt the Catholics because they had their dual allegiance, didn't they? To the king or the queen and to the pope. How could they have a dual allegiance? Burn them. Exactly. And, think, and there's, there's a complete lack of understanding at, a fun, you know, at such a deep level about anti-Semitism is not new. It did not start in the 30s. It is rooted back in the 15th and 16th century when... Portugal, for example, told all of its Jewish people that they could leave and they would put ships on for them, and they did, and they sank the ships. Yes. For Europe, anti-Semitism has been a thing. Uh, th 13th century in, the, in, in Britain, uh, all the Jews were expelled. Exactly. You've got, and it goes back even further than that, you've got, even, even within the Christian Bible, there are anti-Semitic tropes. It is the Jews in the temple, sorry, Jew, Jews always comes out of my word in, in my mouth and feels horrible. Jewish people were in the temple, they were the money lenders, they were the jewels, they were the bad people, they were who Jesus attacked. They, they were the people that uh, killed Jesus. <laughs> exactly, it's, it's almost like the Bible was written by people that didn't like The, the Romans Jewish washed people. their hands of the affair, quite famously. <laughs> Thanks Pontius Pilate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good work, great, yes. great PR team, that guy. But, but yeah, no, so, we, we, and, and, we, we know this, don't we? I mean, it, 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 well, I think we do, on. but I, like, I, I, am, I am speaking now to Corbyn Easters that may be watching this, and despite the fact that I think I've very much lost this argument, will go into the comments and vote for me purely on the fact that I'm wearing the Corbyn <laughs> I think it's important for them to know that that shit is not acceptable, that shit is anti-Semitic, and that is why when you turn around and say, there's no anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, it's all some kind of Israeli lobby, that's fucking anti-Semitic! It's all a smear. It's a smear. Yeah. It's so, a like, smear. But Joel you know wasn't a smear, Phil. Joel you know wasn't a smear. Um, when this election got announced, like, I, obviously I got a, a lot of people contacting me and saying, Graham, please, can you tell people to vote tactically? Can you get people who watch your YouTube channel, but, you know, on Twitter, on Facebook? I, you know, I'm not a huge audience, but I do have a few people who, who you know, look, look to me for advice about what to do in, in politics. Uh, amazingly, like there's only about five of them, and one of them to be more. But I made videos saying that people should vote tactically, and I was linking to the website. So I was got this plan to link to the website. And I'll, I'll bet you every single vote. time you recommended that someone vote for Liberal Democrats, fuck off and join the Tories. <laughs> no, no, I didn't get that far, mate. I didn't get that far because on the night that I was supposed to be uploading my first video saying, hey, everyone vote tactically, which I shot. I, I, I could show you it, you know? Um, I, Jeremy Corbyn was on Andrew O'Neill's Andrew Andrew show. And he said, um, 
uh, will you apologise for the hurt? For the hurt? And he said no. Yeah. And it was that yeah. moment I was like, I can't, I, I can't in good faith tell people to vote for this fucking clown's party, even though it had been my party for the majority of all of my adult life. But no, I, I, it, it, I had to... And that, that didn't piss me off, because the, the, quest, the question wasn't, will you apologise for anti-Semitism in the Labour Party? No, the, it wasn't. It was, it was will you apologise for the hurt? Yes. That is a fucking he was like, no. easy, I'm, easy six. Easy win. Easy win. I'm, abs I'm absolutely horrified that regardless of what has taken place, if someone is upset or hurt, I am sorry. Yeah. Yes. But I, I, that, I, well, I, I, the I'm line, sorry, the line was a sore smear. There was nothing. There was, there's nothing to come back on that. And also, you know, for for the for the, the the biggest political party in the United Kingdom to be investigated by the Equalities and Human Rights Commission for anti-Semitism, for two of the Jewish MPs to leave citing anti-Semitism. If that had been me, my business, I had 250 employees and two of them were Jewish and they were bullied out of their job and they left and they wrote a letter saying, I am leaving because I've been bullied because I'm Jewish. I would be horrified. I would want root and stem reform of everything and I would go on every platform available and condemn the behavior of these people working for me and make sure that they were all gotten rid of. And I'll step down. I'll think I had failed my employees. I would think, oh my God, you know, and that's not even in a situation where you're gonna be running into a popularity contest in, in the foreseeable future. I would, I would agree to you to the point, if, if the people that did those things were Labour Party members, yeah, I'm completely with you. Um, I think it's been borne out in investigations they were not party members, they were party activists. And again, that's why I say that the Labour movement has a, has a much bigger problem with anti-Semitism than the Labour Party. But what really, what really annoys me, and I find myself defending it and I find myself throwing up in my mouth a little bit, is one, that's what about her, And two, Me Too movement, we believe the victim. Yes. The second, a Jewish MP says that she was bullied because she was Jewish. Where's the evidence? Where's, your, Where's the evidence? Where's the evidence? You've been against, you've I been working against Jeremy Corbyn since day one. It, it, I, did, it did happen I, did, I did a whole podcast with one of my regulars on the podcast where we discussed this. And they were just like adamant. There's no evidence. There's no evidence. Like, but two MPs have left. There's no evidence. Yeah, and I, that's, I, I, that, I never put the podcast that is evidence. up. I never put it up because I just thought, well, this is pointless. We didn't yeah. talk about anything. It was like, here's some evidence. No, I don't believe it. I've not seen it. I'm, well, here it is. Look at it. No, I'm not, not looking at that. <laughs> exactly. I mean, like, and, that, and that's, again, why I'm re really clear. There's, there is anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, but I think the problem was anti-Semitism in the Labour movement, which is why that dossier of thousands and thousands of cases, which were referred to the police, and you get people on my side wearing my shirt going, you but only 0.1% of those are actually in the Labour Party. Okay. <sighs> the defence. That is acceptable. So all those things fucking happened. Murders. But you're going, well, they're not wearing my shirt, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. And it's, and it's no, and that, that really made me... I think, I think you're coming on the side of the prosecution here because... I'm not. I'm, I'm going to say I'm that this is all the fault, again, of one man. It's all the fault of Jeremy Corbyn but he was, for being he was a really, really shit very, leader. But he was always very critical of the people that were involved in this, no matter who they were. He was always very consistent. I just don't think... Was he? Hate on all sides. Is, yeah, I'm, I... I because that's, that's what he did. He, refu he refused to ever say anti-Semitism is bad. It was always all forms of racism are bad. All forms of racism are bad. Yeah. And, and that's and good people change. on both sides. They didn't want to adopt all of the International Holocaust Remembrance a Association. Um, they're, they're I've, ten, got my, I've got my own feelings on that. I don't they're, 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 they're ten lines on, um, on what anti-Semitism was. And one of the most important ones, and I really feel this, is that you just can't compare the actions of the Israeli government, as shit as they are, to that of the Nazis, yes. because it is that, just that's horrifically insensitive. And, 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 and just the fact that the people go, oh, we need, to, we need to discuss this, are we sure we want to go? It's like, no, what the? And eventually, eventually. And, and I just want to ask something, actually. Jewish Voice for Labour, were they an official part of Labour? Were they... Um, were, were, were they members or were they sorry what they, 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 were, they, were, they were members whether, whether they were 
That seemed to be a group whose job it was to... To run counterintelligence on... Fake, the... fake news, uh, smear campaigns, uh, basically to, to undermine any of the things that any of the... So Jewish, Jewish, Jewish Voice for Labour was... Jewish, Jewish Voice for Labour wearing my shirt. What was the name of the team that were wearing the centrist shirts? They were... Labour... No, I can't remember. There was another one. But yeah, they were just in a counter campaign against each other. I mean, my, my preferred team, if I was picking one, was Judas, because I thought they were pretty fucking funny. But even they, in the end... But but even, is... even Jeremy Corbyn going to, to uh, Passover, it was, it was Seder night or something, at, at, with, with the, the Judas guys, it's like, yeah. is he taking the piss? I mean, it's like, exactly. oh, he's like, just out of the wrong type of Jews, is he? Oh, well, there yeah, you just, go. Just like... don't fucking go to any of them. No, it didn't happen to any of to this. Passover. I, and, and yet he did, and it just seemed to antagonise the Jewish community in the same way that he antagonised the, the Remain community, who were just like, will you please help us here? Will you throw us a fucking bone, Jeremy? And he didn't. And he just looked down on us like, I don't need you. I don't need Jews. I don't need Remainers. I can win this through my own power and dignity. I'm a good man. I'm a good man. Don't forget, I'm a good man. I, I don't believe in my heart of hearts that he is anti-Semitic, though, which I think was a charge late at him. I think he did. I, I think he is. Things, and I can give you one perfect example, that mural. I don't the care mural? if at it. I don't care if he didn't look at a good quality photo of it. But, 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 but was that naivety? Was that naivety? No, 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 no. That's not naivety. That was, um, uh, what do you call it? Gross negligence in a job of, in a position of authority. If you're going to make a fucking statement on something, you make goddamn sure you know about it. And when it turns out that you have forward in the book, you uh, that's, that's a different book, and that I don't agree that was anti-Semitism. I think that was that was very much criticism of Israel. But to go back to the mural, because that's the one that I think is the valid criticism of him. As soon as it's realised what you've done. Unrepentant, he was. He wouldn't. He was. There was no groveling apology. There was a lot of boundary. There was a lot of excuse making. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. You, you defended the indefensible. Now you need to throw yourself and apologise. Yeah. Even if these are people that you thing. feel are, are have an ideological argument against you, because I mean, the BDS, do, uh, sorry, the British Board Deputy do not represent uh, all all Jews in the United Kingdom. That's you know, well documented. Even, and even if you feel they've got an agenda against you, fuck it, you have made the mistake. You've got to throw yourselves at them. Because even then, if they go, no, we're not forgiving you, then they're the dicks. I, I, I was just horrified by his whole attitude. It was this attitude of just like, we just didn't matter. And he wouldn't talk to the media. He wouldn't go on James O'Brien. He, he hardly ever was interviewed on, on Newsnight or, or even on like Channel 4 News. It would give him a fairly easy ride because Channel 4 News isn't the mail. You know, it's not the sun. And it, these news outlets were available for him, but he never took them. He, he, you know, he, he, he shunned the media. And then people say, oh, well, you know, it's the media's fault that he, he turned out the way he did. And then when he mentioned about anti-Semitism, I mean, every bloody time he, he did something that was a bit shit or did something wrong or didn't act when he should have acted, people said, oh, he can't be an anti-Semite because he protested against South African apartheid in the 1980s. I'll tell you someone else who also protested against South African apartheid in the 1980s, Mel Gibson. He made a movie called Lethal Weapon 2 with Danny sure Glover, did. who's black, and the bad guys were the South Africans. And they made a big point about being against the apartheid system that doesn't get Mel Gibson off the hook for beating up his girlfriend, driving drunk, getting pulled over by the police and saying, all the wars in the world were caused by <laughs> Jews. Jews. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, we didn't say it because he did that thing, you know, 30 years ago. So obviously he's... I, I would oh, argue that, he's un it, that the number of early day motions, his unequivocal support uh, following like attacks on uh, Jewish communities and stuff, are the, are the evidence that he, that he himself is not an anti-Semite. Not that he what, did... What? What do you think is going to be the result of the Equalities and Human Rights Commission's report into anti-Semitism? Because I think they're going to find that Labour is institutionally anti-Semitic. Where do you I go from I don't there? think that they, are, they will never be that committal. 
Very, is anyone you know, going to get done for this? Is anyone going to go to jail? Or, or no, this? fuck no one will go to jail for it. They'll make some recommendations. They'll, in fact, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw my money on the table here. I bet there will be several recommendations made regarding the specific penalties for specific offences because it's all very blurry and that'll be an easy win for them to come in and say, yep, there were issues and here's how you resolve them. Off you go. Because they will, they will not go in and open themselves up to being that committal. No investigative body without real teeth ever will, simply because you know, there's enough people who would challenge it, drag it through the papers, what about we? They don't need that in their image. They will come in and say, bad has happened. Here, is a, here are some small punishments. That was another, another favourite of the people who claimed Jeremy Corbyn couldn't possibly be anti-Semitic or you know, claimed that anti-Semitism didn't really exist in the Labour Party, it was all a smear, it was what about ism? which drove me bloody mad. All you're doing here is picking and choosing your causes at the same time as saying, well, I believe that all racism is bad, but that racism is worse. Look what they yeah. look what racists are well, doing. Well, exactly. And, and, and Labour managed to upset a lot of Indians in this country because of taking the Pakistani side over another thorny issue of Kashmir. And it's like, I don't want Labour to take a bloody stance on this international difficult stuff until it's in power and its stance can be, not that one side's wrong and the other one's right, its stance can be, let's have peace, let's sit down and discuss a, a roadmap for peace in Kashmir, in Palestine, in West Papua, in, in Western Sahara, in Somaliland, in you know, all these places around the world that are striving for, for some kind of... Someone Sorry, to just on and help them. I was, in, I was not... in Morocco recently, and um, yeah. not that recently, obviously. Uh, and I saw a map with uh, Morocco being suspiciously far south on that coast. We've also got this thing of like, it's not the way to go around about politics. And I think that everything that yeah. Jeremy Corbyn did, whether it was siding on the side of the Palestinians against the Israeli government, uh, siding on the side of the Pakistanis over the uh, Indians in, in Kashmir, uh, the way he treated the Remainers, uh, the Remain campaign, the way he reacted to anti you know, accusations of anti Semitism, the way he reacted to uh, election data, you know, actual elections and polling data was just wrong. Like everything he could do wrong, he did wrong. And the damage that he has done to socialism is, uh, and the country as a whole, because we're going to be obsessed with Brexit for the next 10 years because it's just, uh, any, you know, after COVID's over, mm. it's going to be back to Brexit because we're heading towards mm. a no-deal Brexit. There's, there's, there's a lot of weed being thrown here. Uh, I'm going to be I, I, Gibraltarian independence, thank you. And I, I genuinely feel like if anyone else pretty much had been leader of the Labour Party over the last few years, then this wouldn't have happened. And this has a knock-on effect to the world because the European Union is the only entity on the planet with the money and the willingness to actually do something about climate change before it's too late. At the end of this decade, it's going to be too late. We could have been at the forefront of that, but we're going to spend this next, next decade having you know, economic catastrophe after economic catastrophe. And then uh, in, the, in the 2030s, when the climate starts going haywire, we're going to be seeing even more economic catastrophes. And I, don't, I, I honestly feel that this wouldn't have happened had someone competent been in charge of Labour, and maybe someone so, with a bit of humility so, who could look at so, so one, on that and, subject, I want to question uh, stand down. a lot of throw Brexit to one side and look at socialism being put back or accepted. Yeah, there are three prominent American socialists that pretty much everyone watching this video would be able to name: Bernie Sanders, AOC, and Ella Ramar. Now. They, they are subject to the exact same criticisms that were thrown at Jeremy Corbyn. Well, I don't see too many accusations of anti-Semitism to oh, uh, do you not? any Sanders. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, oh mate, it's, it's there. It's you. Really? Oh, God, yeah. Anyway, so that, 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 we're going to have to wind this up because I think this is the longest podcast we have ever done. I, I had a lot of notes where I was going to sort of push into the credit, attack the credibility of the people that made the anti-Semitism remarks, but I think that is just what about her? I think we can both agree people like Melanie Phillips are reviled individuals that we don't need to go into much detail on, and it's got nothing yeah. to do with which magic person in the sky she believes in. You know, we all believe in different <laughs> magic people in the sky. I don't... I, I, Luke Skywalker, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> I like I like that fine spaghetti monster. He's my favourite. Anyway, we are very much getting off yep. the topic here, Phil. So um, that, that's, that's been the people versus Jeremy Corbyn. I've, I've said my bit. I, a lot that I wanted to get off my chest. Thank you for putting up with that, Phil. And, and thank you for offering some sane rebuttals um, because there are a lot of insane rebuttals that you could have made. And yes. thank you for not using... I'm not going down that route. But um, yeah, I, 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 let, let, let's, let's see what people leave in the comments um, to say whether they agree with me or, or agree with you. And, and uh, uh, I would like to ask people to follow me at Phil in Gibraltar so that for every Corbyn I, I lose, I can uh, try and make up for that. With yes. The salience uh, does exist on the left, I promise. And, w and will you do this again, uh, Phil, with me? And we'll actually be in the pub, next, well, the virtual pub uh, next Absolutely. time. And uh, we can talk a bit about Gibraltar and the Come. pending no deal. If you want to join us for that, please do. Uh, in the meantime, Phil in Gibraltar, thank you very much. I will see you again soon. And, and, thank you. and thank you for watching. Good night.